Hi guys, WNews.com and I'm here with the ASUS Transformer Book T100TA. This one is a 10 inch Windows tablet with a dock bundle in the package. This model was launched in late 2013 and it's priced at $462 on Amazon. This is our first Intel Bay Trail CPU tablet that we're testing and it's also the very first Windows 8.1 slate that we've got on our hands on. As you can see, this device runs Windows 8.1, it has a bundled keyboard dock, and now let's talk about the design. Once you combine these two, once you insert the tablet into this attaching mechanism and combine them, you will turn them into a sort of netbook because of the 10 inch screen. It's a plasticky tablet, this one, as you can see. This one is plastic here, unlike the usual metal chassis from ASUS. It feels rather solid in spite of being plastic. The dock offers you its typical dock design that we're used to from the Transformer series and uh, it's a typical one, it has nicely, nicely spaced uh, keys. We got a new latching mechanism, as you can see, this time you won't have to pull some sort of trigger, you only have to press this button and the latch is off. Overall everything feels solid and one thing I must mention here is that when you put the tablet in and you want to pull it back out you have to be careful so you won't have one of these pins stuck inside the attaching mechanism. On the dock side we got uh, keys that are noisy but they're generously spaced, we got a solid hinge here and we got the big screen bezel for the tablet. The weight for both of them should be about 550 grams and the thickness should be around 11 or 12 millimeters once again for both of them. So overall this hybrid should weigh 1.1 kilograms and when I say hybrid I mean this. It turns into a netbook and overall it weighs 1.1 kilograms and measures about 24 millimeters at most. You can flex the device to a maximum angle. This is the maximum angle I was talking about but it tends to fall on its uh, tablet side because it's a bit heavier or the angle makes it seem heavier. This hinge degree I was talking about, well this one is 135 degrees, that's the maximum level and now let's discuss the ports and slots, I'm pressing the button and I have just removed the tablet. Ok, so as I said, ports and slots, I'm going to start with the side of the tablet, here we got the volume buttons and the home button, this is where you find your on off button, speakers on this side one, another one here and on this side you can find the micro SD card slot, here you can find the micro HDMI and micro USB port, audio jack and it's pretty much everything that the tablet has to offer, on the lower side the attaching mechanism, on the upper side and front a camera and that's it. By the way the micro USB port on the tablet does the charging for the whole combo and uh, now the tablet offers a USB 3.0 port right here and that's about it. There is no SD card slot here and most importantly there is no battery inside this baby as far as I heard. Another unique feature is that the ASUS Transformer Book T100 does not have a Windows button here as we're used to which is kind of strange. And uh, overall we draw the line for the design. This is a design based on compromises that were made to achieve such a low price. But the overall result, result is still pretty nice. Now moving on to the hardware side, we got an Intel Atom CPU. This one is the Intel Atom Z3740. It's a quad core processor clocked at 1.3 GHz, aka the famous Bay Trail you've come to know. We also get 2 gigs of RAM and 32 or 64 gigs of storage. And other specs include this 10 inch display. It's an IPS screen with a resolution of 1366 over 768. On the graphics side, well, we've got uh, Intel HD graphics. On the connectivity side, we got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, micro HDMI, and on the camera side, we got a front 1.2 megapixel camera. There's also stereo speakers, and rounding up the specs list is a 31 watt hour battery integrated into the tablet that on paper it should provide you with uh, 11 hours of functioning time or 10 days of standby. We also have an interesting thing to show you. There is a file called battery report. We managed to pull it from the device where in our test we managed to achieve an impressive time of functioning. We did the 
uh, full HD video playback test. So basically, we started a video, a full HD video, and put it on repeat, and the tablet offered us 12 hours and 40 minutes of continuous full HD playback with Wi Fi on and brightness at 50%. Right now, it's at 100%, and we kept it like this at 50%. So, once again, an amazing time. As I said, 12 hours and 40 minutes of battery beating basically all the tablets out there. With Wi Fi on and brightness of 50%, so a very, very impressive result. So, overall, this is an excellent battery, especially when compared even to the big tablets, even to the iPads, it still shines. And I have to say that, uh, aside from the battery uh, last time, the battery charging time, well, this one is about 5 hours, which is pretty big, but considering what we're getting, I'm uh, ready to sacrifice my time to load such a big battery. Okay, once again, there is no battery inside this dock right here. Now moving on to the audio side of things, I'm going to test the stereo speakers, see what we've got here, a bunch of songs. It's requesting that we log in, not just yet. Let's play this one. Turn the volume all the way up. Now let's turn up the volume again. Okay, so as you just heard, the volume is deafening, I couldn't even leave it to the level 100, I kept it at 50 or 80, one of the speakers here, one here, incredible volume, stereo speaker, Sonic Master technology, very loud, excellent bass, Xbox music looks pretty fine, and we've got great speakers. Okay, it rotated, so that was it as far as the audio is concerned, now let's cover a bit of video. That's why I'm going to enter Xbox video. This is a 10.1 inch screen with a resolution of 1366 over 768. We got an IPS panel here. And uh, now let's check out our video samples. So we got this one for example. It, this one is an IPS screen with wide viewing angles as you can see for yourself. The image is not lost when checking it out at various angles. However, the rotation may be a little bit of a problem, but you can lock it. 10 inch screen, reasonably bright. We tested the brightness with our lux meter, we achieved 187 lux units. It's a bit low, but it's okay, at least for indoor usage, should be enough. This is the test that we did, and this is our instrument 187 lux units. RGB striped pixels, this is what the screen looks like if you use a special microscope on black and if you use a special microscope on white. The colors are not very vivid, that's one of the main problems of the screen and you can really feel in the area of the screen that ASUS has cut some corners to make the price lower. This is a decent compromise. As I said, for indoor usage, the screen brightness and colors are perfect, but if you want to go outdoors, you maybe won't be satisfied. Up front we have a 1.2 megapixel camera here, it's a webcam, not much to say about it. And uh, I have to mention some other stuff that you may find interesting. For example, the RAM on this device is DDR3, the storage is eMMC flash, we got a snap UI without any trace of lag, so lag was not a problem on this tablet. And you may want to hear some figures, for example, the startup time of this device, well, this one was 18 seconds. The shutdown time was 6 seconds and it went from sleep to working instantly, so the speed is actually pretty good on this device. Now you can see the tablet with the keyboard attached. And I have to say that this touchpad is kind of narrow, here you can also see the uh, mouse cursor on the screen. And I have to say that uh, with this port on the side, the USB 3.0, we achieved 20 mega per second when transferring stuff 
from a USB stick and let's check out Internet Explorer and its speed this is Internet Explorer 11 and I'm just going to use the physical keyboard and enter tabletnews.com okay so we're typing in tablet news this is one of the fastest web browsers I've ever tried as you can see it ran instantly and of course fast pinch to zoom no problem here other things worth mentioning here of course there are a couple of options that I'll show you just a little bit later when we talk about Windows 8.1 and all that okay so this touchpad here is actually pretty cool because it can offer you gestures for example let's say I open some apps and then I switch from them and if I do a three fingers up gesture this one triggers a cool multitasking system that you can see right here with all the windows that are being open right now showing up here you can even move them from side to side or something like this so let's do it again one of the coolest features I've seen on a Windows 8 device this one here sort of a little bit of multitasking I haven't yet figured out if you can actually close these ones apparently you can do with a small X very cool another gesture is uh, let's say we're in this app and you swipe down go back and with a two finger tap it's basically your uh, right click so problem solved these are the gestures that are offered by this touchpad this is quite a noisy touchpad you'll hear it in a minute so if you're trying to do some browsing at night try to, not trying to wake up your kid you will actually the keys are also pretty noisy almost wrote giggity there okay and uh, another thing that keeps pestering me here I have a notification telling me that I'm about to get one terabyte of free cloud storage from ASUS for a year which is an offer that comes bundled with this beautiful device and now I'm going to discuss the improvements and upgrades that Windows 8.1 brings to this device for example in this start screen we now get new large tiles so new tile sizes as you can see different from those in Windows 8 there are also more colors to customize the background you can see it here you get a personalization area you can personalize with a variety of patterns and also you can change the background color and accent color however you want and with a larger variety of options now there's also the ability to access the app list by doing this gesture before you access the app list by doing like this and then pressing an option here now you simply have to do a semi swipe and this is the app list available on this device and other things we're mentioning in windows 8.1 well you can set windows 8.1 to boot straight into desktop mode so you won't have to skip edit anytime you want you can boot straight into it and uh, there are also the search suggestions are now in the search charm and you can trigger that by pressing the Windows button and S but you can also trigger it the normal way like this and now the search has evolved into something called smart search basically you write you enter and let's see let's try to uh, search a band for example the course and as you can see this is what smart search is all about you can play their songs go straight to Xbox music see their albums videos check out the Wikipedia page so this is what smart search is all about it also integrates from what I've heard your emails that smart search SkyDrive local files and online content so a very very nice way to search for stuff online the lock screen can now become a photo gallery so if you go to the settings and this is the lock screen options you can browse around to change the pictures play a slideshow use pictures from SkyDrive, include a camera roll and also there is a shortcut straight to the camera application from the lock screen and uh, other features here is that you get Bluetooth LE supported in Windows 8.1 and you can snap three or four apps side by side of course on bigger screens this one is a tennis screen so let's say for example I've got a mail app and I want to snap the reading list next to it so these are two apps running side by side only two on this small screen but as I said on a bigger screen you can snap three four apps and another change brought by Windows 8.1 the start button is back you can see it right here if you tap it you should be able to go to the start menu right here and if you use your right click on it a bunch of options will appear 
So let's try that. Okay, here we go. And now I'm going to use the mouse pointer, the touchpad, searching for it on the screen. Okay, only now we're connected. So here's the pointer and let's say I press right click or I double tap, go to this screen and let's say I press left click. A bunch of options appear like programs and features, mobility center, power options, event viewer, system, device manager and stuff like that. So that's what the start button is all about. Now as far as Internet Explorer 11 is concerned, that's the option that you get on this device. You can get up to 100 tabs open on this uh, netbook or better said the tablet with dock. There's also fast at rendering WebGL content and you have a bunch of tabs that you can enjoy at the bottom part of the screen. Now let's remove it from the dock and continue with our analysis of Windows 8.1. And also you must know that we got some modifications, for example the store is now more intuitive, Windows Store has improved, it's easier to find the new apps here and the interface is just a little bit cleaner compared to Windows 8. So these are the improvements that Windows 8.1 brings compared to the predecessor. There's also deeper SkyDrive integration on this device. We also have automatic updates for your applications and there's also improved multi-monitor support. And aside from that, you get um, the ability to see files when you search for stuff. You can actually see your own files or those from SkyDrive. Overall, it's a slight improvement from Windows 8. Only slight, not a huge one. And now as far as the benchmarks are concerned, well, let's see. We got them saved in a screenshot area. We did a lot of benchmarks, believe me. Okay, here we go. The first one is the good old 3D Mark. We tried the iStorm Extreme and the iStorm Unlimited test. In the Extreme we got 8506 points, as you can see here. And meanwhile the Dell Venue 11 Pro gets 6800, so we beat that model. Now proceeding even further, we got iStorm Unlimited where we scored 10k points, which is pretty impressive, 10583. You can see the comparison with other models. For example, the HP Slatebook 10 X2 scored 11,000 points, for the sake of comparison, we're pretty close to it. Okay, so we continue with the benchmarks. We got GFX Bench, here we scored 14 frames per second with the T100 model I'm holding in my hand. Compared to the iPad 4 and its 19 frames per second, I would say it's not a very bad result. Moving further, as far as the speed is concerned, well, you can see here the disk tests, the right and read the speeds, also the test for the CPU, RAM test and GPU test, all of them with pretty good results. Then there is the speed of the connection, we achieved 16 mega per second when it comes to download and by the way an iPhone 5 scored 13 mega per second in the same network, so I would say we're doing fine. Now as far as the read write speed is concerned, we achieved a write speed of 41 mega per second copy speed of 36 mega per second and a read speed of 106 megabytes per second. Meanwhile, a Lenovo uh, laptop with a SSD achieves 500 mega per second, but is the advantage of an SSD. This benchmark is called the relative benchmark and the score here is 2101 points. And meanwhile, the HP Slatebook X2 scores 2300 points, but that one has a full HD screen. The browser test, here it is, pretty good score. 2737 points, browser mark 2.0, we beat and we almost beat, I should say, the Galaxy Note 3 with its 3000 points, I would say pretty decent, especially when compared to an Android browser. Finally a very good score, Sun Spider 415ms, the lower the better, the iPad Air scored 426, so we beat it with Internet Explorer 11. Overall a very good performance, very good benchmark results. And uh, I've seen on the web comparisons between this Baytrail CPU and the Intel Core i3. I have to say it's pretty close to the Core i3. By the way, this device is able to run Bioshock, Bioshock 1. Of course, in medium graphics, it should look just fine. People are wondering what's the difference between Windows RT and this Windows. Well, among others, it's the ability to install applications 
using exe files which is what i'm going to do over the following minutes so let's say i enter internet explorer and i want to download winrar okay so this is winrar and i want this 32-bit version do you want to run or save winrar it's an exe and i'm going to save it let's say straight to the desktop okay security scan we completed the download now i'm running it Okay, install and I'm installing a program with an exe file right now so as you can see this is clearly Windows 8.1 and not Windows RT in case you are wondering. Other stuff we're mentioning is the list of apps on this device yet again I'm going to remove it from the keyboard and let's check out the apps that are pre-installed or installed on this device. Okay so let's have a look at the list. The first one that uh, jumps straight to my eyes is the sticky notes. It's a cute little note taking app. It allows you to take notes on the screen, write stuff like buy milk and things like that. And then you can delete it. Then you got a feature called math input, which I find to be very interesting. So let's find it. Math input panel. As you can see, you can scribble stuff around. And the math calculus will be done for you. You can write, erase, select and correct with various formulas to apply. So if you're a math whiz, you should probably like this application. Continuing the list of apps. Okay, so we also got Asus Web Storage. This one is used to store stuff in the cloud. And with this device comes bundled one terabyte of cloud storage, which is actually pretty cool. Of course, you have to log in into your own account, which I'll be able to do just a little bit better. Remember that storage is of one terabyte in the cloud with this device. Next up, we've got bundled Kindle and Netflix, both of them here. Here's Kindle, which is usual e-reading options. And then comes Netflix that allows you to watch your favorite movies, TV shows like House of Cards and all that. And then comes a huge Bing suite. It includes everything from Bing Finance. It even has a section for sports. Why can't I swipe? Let's see this one. Okay, doesn't seem to want to be moving, so let's proceed further. Aside from Bing Finance, we also have Bing Food and Drinks. You can see here collections, add a recipe, usually food related stuff. And Bing has received even more apps. So aside from food and drinks, we have health and fitness. All of them with the famous Metro UI. Some of them useful, some of them you'll be wondering why you cannot look for them online simply instead of using an application. We got Bing Finance, Travel, Sports, News and Maps. Let's give a go to Maps. Apparently there is also some Nokia involvement here, as you can see, their logo available right here. You can add a pin, change the map style, aerial view, show the traffic, select your own location, add some favorites, and that's about it. And even further into the list of apps, we obviously got SkyDrive that you saw earlier with a bunch of pictures I've taken with various Windows phones over the past months. And then there's Skype, there's an app called Reader. And uh, there's also OneNote, there's an app called Reading List, there's News, also from Bing, Alarms, Desktop, Calendar, People, this is the Reading List. You can share stuff from your web browser to your Reading List and remind it for later. And let's see, of course there's the Office 2013 package, we got here, we got Word, there's PowerPoint, Outlook, Outlook is back by the way. Um, there's also Access, Excel, Publisher and PowerPoint obviously. So let's have a look at a Word file and an Excel file I received, I sent myself actually to via email. So let's read the Word file. By the way, I'm not authenticated with an Office account right now. So what you see here is sort of a trial of Word. Of course, once you buy this tablet, you're supposed to get Office 2013 bundled with it. But the idea is that you have an Office account and a subscription for the 365 service. So this is what the Word document looks like. You can also select this type of view. More options here. The 
this is how you activate your office experience as I said before and if you want to check out an Excel account an Excel uh, file excuse me here we go this is what a sample Excel spreadsheet looks like on this device of course you'll have more luck instead of using your fingers you probably want to use the keyboard and its touchpad to actually get into those columns and edit stuff the way you want to using a touchpad that's much more precise than your big finger on a 10 inch screen so basically that's the full list of apps you got on this device as you can see in the asus section they didn't quite bundle a lot of apps but now it's time for the big conclusions related to the asus transformer book t100 of course we got some pros we got some cons on the pro side there's the fantastic battery inside this device 12 hours and 40 minutes of full hd playback there's the perfect speakers at the back huge volume very good bass then there is no lag whatsoever a very good cpu and pretty good gpu we did play bioshock on this device after all and aside from that um, the performance of the cpu is relatively close to the core e3 setup the office bundle is very nice for this device, yet another pro, and the price is very good. On the con side, of course, there's the plastic case, there's the lack of a back camera, there's the weak screen brightness, there's the fact that we don't have many unique bundled apps on this device, and I'm talking here about the ASUS apps. For example, on Android tablet, we have a lot of bundled apps, unique apps, while on this one, not very impressive applications the fact that office needs a subscription may bother some of you but you probably have an account so that's no problem windows 8.1 still is not very appealing even compared to windows 8 and finally the touchpad here is a bit narrow for my tastes those are the cons and now for the final grades for the asus transformer book t100 we give the design an 8.3 out of 10 the hardware i'm going to give a 9 out of 10 and operating system and user interface 8.5 out of 10. The final grade is 8.6 out of 10 for the Transformer Book T100 and for the good price we're going to bump it up a bit to 9 out of 10. So the appealing price makes this device even more uh, affordable and appealing. I've seen it sold for even less than $500 making it a very solid purchase alternative. This is tablenews.com. This is the ASUS Transformer Book T100 TA with bundled keyboard dock. Hope you like this review. We'll be back with more soon. Bye bye.